people of Reddit who have lived a double life. How did you get there and what happened? In Japan, heart surgeon. Number 1. Steady hand. One day, Yakuza boss need new heart. I do operation. But mistake. Yakuza boss die. Yakuza very mad. I hide in fishing boat. Come to America. No English. No food. No money. Daryl give me job. Now I have house. American car. And new woman. Daryl. Save. Life. My big secret. I kill Yakuza boss on purpose. I good surgeon. The best. I have a name that's unpronounceable to most Americans. In elementary school instead of listening to them mangle my name, I decided to choose a random English name to go by, while in the states. Quite a lot of foreigners do this. A year came and went, and now I was in a new class with new teachers and new classmates. I decided on a whim to choose a different name, to go by that year. I've been doing it every time I'm in a new social circle since then. I can tell when, and where I met someone by what they call me. Throwaway account obviously. I lived a seemingly normal life in Florida. I traveled a lot for work, so it wasn't uncommon for me to up and vanish for a few days at a time. What no one knew was that I was actually delivering several bales of some very potent marriage lana up to Philadelphia, DC, Baltimore, Nye, etc. I did it once on a whim and got addicted to the rush and the money. Over the span of three and one half years, I made 27 round trips and never once dealt with a cop. I drove a nondescript Chevy Cavalier that I put patriotic bumper stickers on, kept my hair short and face shaved, wore polo shirts and dockers, and never ever exceeded the speed limit. I looked like the thousands of other young professionals headed to work, or a meeting or something, so I never gave cops a reason to profile me. I was the last kind of person they were looking to pull over. I'd go to the arranged meeting place, receive a brown paper bag with cash in it, then leave my car unlocked, and go grab a burger or just walk around Walmart for an hour or so. When I'd come back, the bales and the people who took them were long gone. Since I couldn't keep depositing large amount of cash in my bank, I'd have thousands of dollars in fake soup cans in my pantry and in my sock drawer. Since no one knew how much I made from my legitimate job, I was able to spend freely and had every game console and movie I wanted. I only quit when I met the woman I eventually married and couldn't keep up the ruse of just heading out of town on a moment's notice. It took some time getting used to being frugal again and not eating steak for dinner three times a week. Only two people know what I used to do, but I'm not worried about them talking. One has been charged with perjury before. So his word isn't worth shit to the authorities, and I have so much dirt, and proof of it, on the other I could get him sent to prison for a long time, and he knows it. I'm English, but have spent much of my youth in the US, and live here now with a green card. When I worked retail, I adopted an American accent, because it's more efficient, than having to explain to everyone that I'm English, and moved here, when I was 14 etc etc. It was just more efficient. This continued into office jobs, until we were in a meeting with some English clients, who spoke first. I immediately went English. My boss, looks at me for a second, stops the meeting, and says are you having a stroke? Then I had to explain, and we wasted half an hour. Sigh. My bud is German Maximum and I went out on this epic bike trip, 1500 miles around VT and Maine and stuff. We're at a bar in Burlington, and my buddy Jim becomes the Canadian. He came up with it a month prior. He pretends he's from Montreal and only speaks French, but he has enough broken English to get by. So he'll chain together nonsense and tiny phrases in a French Canadian accent. Kids love it. Anyways, we are at a bar and Jim is bumbling out I am. From Canada, Montreal, Quebec and a French Canadian turns around at the table next to us. You are from Montreal. Bonjour. Speaks several French sentences. It was incredibly funny watching him fess up. The actual Canadian was legitimately confused for a beat because his English wasn't so good. We actually ended up drinking with that Canadian dude all night. In high school I was a really hard working student who would always try his best to get in a and be nice to other people. Well in college all of that changed. I was tired of being a nice guy and tired of spending all of my time reading and studying. I wanted to be someone 
to walk down the street and people yelling an inside joke to me which I respond to with another witty comment. To make them all laugh, I was going to an out of state college, so I knew no one would recognize me. Towards the end of my senior year I took some improv classes and joined comedy clubs at my school to try to be a funnier and more outgoing guy. It turned from me studying English match etc to me studying comedy and testing myself to be more outgoing. My first day of class I was extremely nervous but tried to just keep cool. I really didn't say much but at the end of class went outside and kind of joked around for a couple of minutes with some of the people. They laughed a bit and it was pretty fun. Although it was still really nothing I felt accomplished. My behavior like this continued all throughout college getting invited to parties, having one night stands, and just being that fun kind of guy. Though the partying got bad I was non-stop missing classes and my grades really fell because of it. By my junior year I reached rock bottom and failed every single one of my classes. Though somehow I was in a way oblivious to what was going on. Somehow I just didn't care what I worked so hard to achieve and just let all my accomplishments become nothing. I was no longer in a student I turned into drug addict alcoholic who would have to text 50 different people each day to see who I could stay with that night. I realized this needed to change and slowly it did. It was really hard but I soon became my old self again and I'm now one semester away from being finished with my degree in law. I still see some of my party friends time to time and I'm just thankful I realized when I needed to quit and take responsibility. I now can't be happier because I have an awesome girlfriend, a great job, and a promising future. This is a long one, my double life got pretty deep. It started in high school where I got bad grades, so I started to scan my report cards and change the grades on them. We had to make our parents sign them, so I showed the fake report cards and forged my dad's signature on the real ones. So, my parents thought I had good grades, while in reality I sucked. Then, I got to college. Wasn't able to enter in a good program because of my shitty grades, so I lied again. Told my parents I got in an excellent program, while in reality I got in a pretty shitty one. College ended and I had to continue with the lie. Told my parents I got a job in the supposed field I was studying in, while in reality I ended up in a shitty job. The bad thing about that is, that I don't even feel bad or guilty, I just hope that shit won't hit the fan one day, and that I land in a great position in my current field so THST everything fix itself. TL, doctor, lied to my family about my grades and current career. Not me, my father. During the Great Depression my grandfather was injured at his job and couldn't work. For a year, to keep the family going, my then 12 year old father and his older brother dropped out of school and ran change raising scams on shopkeepers in Cleveland, Ohio for money, pretty much as the family's only income. My grandparents knew about it, didn't approve, but didn't stop them either, it's just what kept food on the table in tough times. After a year, grandpa went back to work, and my dad and uncle went back to school, and to just being regular kids again. Change raising is a generic term for several variations for scamming a cashier, while they are giving you your change from whatever purchase you just made. They are all various cover stories for getting the cashier to combine several change giving transactions at the same time, and the cashier ultimately ends up giving you too much change for your purchase. The scammer ends up with both the item and some extra cash. When it's done well the cashier won't even know it happened. My father taught me how to do several variations of it, including one that is still probably not well known. He showed it to me with me as the cashier, and, even knowing it was going to happen, he still had to slow down and explain to me where the mistake occurs. With the right person doing it, it's slick. I failed out of college at 18. Went back at 22. One semester short of graduating, and I fail out. Again. Don't really want to tell my friends and family I screwed the pooch twice, so I continue my last semester, as though everything was great. Even convinced my parents that walking the line was stupid and would take 5 hours to complete. They bought it, so now that I have my degree, I begin searching for jobs like any normal college graduate. Applying for jobs, and really can't put down on applications that I have a degree because, well I don't. This entire time, 
from my second fail out, all I do every day is try and keep up with the lies and stories I've told to all the curious family and friends. I finally have to make up a job that I'm going to every morning. Because why shouldn't a smart, hardworking, college educated young man not have a job? Right. Eventually it all came falling down on me, and the truth was revealed about my web of lies and deceit. Other than losing the trust of those closest to me, the weight of the world was lifted from my mind as I was able to go back to living one honest life, and not two lives of lies. Sorry for not being very interesting, it's the closest thing I have. Not technically a double life, but more of a secret past. I was raised into the family business which was riddled with crime and violence. I never wanted to be a part of it, but didn't really have a choice. My father expected me to get a high school diploma or a jet, and then commit myself to the business full time. Instead I opted to go to college. There was a major falling out, where my father and I barely spoke for 2 years, and then didn't speak at all for the last 2 years of college. Though it wasn't exactly a double life I never told my friends or my girlfriend, who I planned on proposing to, about my past. I sold myself as some normal guy, but I'd actually done some pretty violent and illegal things by the time I entered college. After college I fell back into that same life, and fell even deeper into it, eventually culminating in addiction. After a few years of being clean, more or less, I left the life again, and once again, set up with someone without telling her anything about my past. We broke up though, and I'm once more caught up in this life. It was difficult finding a job during my first year of college, so I decided to put my skills as a magician to work. By day I was your average Joe. I hung out with my friends, went to class, and went home. Pretty normal life. But by night I was a card mechanic. I would go to card games under an alias. I would never let them see my car, know where I lived, even tell them my age. I second dealt, bottom dealt, and false shuffled my way to quite a few thousand dollars until one night I messed up. I was my turn to deal, and the pot was just under four thousand dollars. That night I was supposed to lose. You see, you can't win every time or people would get suspicious. So I told myself that I would lose that night, just as I have many times before, but greed got the best of me. I flashed the card at the bottom of the deck as I dealt the river and the guy to my left saw it. The four guys I was playing with took me to the back and beat the shit out of me. One of the guys suggested getting a hammer to break my hand. Two of them left to go find one leaving me alone with the other two. I don't know how, but I managed to fight them with my last bit of strength and I got away with only a few bruises and shattered dignity. I haven't cheated since. In the end the total of my winnings, or thefts if you'd rather be honest, was about 5,500. Enough for my first year. Would I do it again? Probably not. But damn, was it fun. In high school, this one is only okay. I was an okay student who did a bunch of nerdy stuff. I play the French horn. I won a pretty significant statewide artistic award. I read The Economist. I also was a ridiculous alcoholic drug addict who would take trips to Seattle on the weekend to smoke pot, drop acid, eat ecstasy, and snort cocaine and party with ballerinas. I also sold weed, mushrooms, LSD, and ecstasy, though mainly just pot. Woo woo. Me and my party buddy even got into a high speed chase with the police, among other car related incidents. God my party buddy was a bad driver. Side note, I'm no longer a drug addict. Still a high flyer in every other way. I work in midtown Manhattan for a luxury fashion company. I'm homeless. I shower at the gym and then go back to the office and sleep. Only the cleaning lady knows I'm there so late. The security guards think I'm a workaholic. I make okay money, but I don't have a home. Well I have three aliases growing up I was poor. So I made connections with friends and family who sold drugs and other illegal things. They call me a certain name. At work I go by my government name and everything is perfectly fine it helps that I deleted FASA book and I can't be looked up on a whim. Also I fuck married women. I'm a bull in several cuckold relationships where I engage in all sorts of acts that I wouldn't want to be made public. I give those couples a name and I save their contracts in my phone under local businesses. Also when I get drunk and turn up I have an alert ego someone I can blame my drunk mistakes on. I'm what I jokingly refer to as a D-list celebrity. 
Not famous by any means, but every so often people will recognize me, or I'll be in a video that will make the rounds on popular blogs. But many of my friends aren't in the entertainment industry, so they are completely shocked when worlds collide. In college it was especially funny. I worked for a pretty big YouTube channel, barely political slash the key of awesome for you YouTube fans out there, and acted in a bunch of their videos. When people asked where I worked, I usually just said I worked for a production company, because unless they were really into Yautub they wouldn't understand my job. Wait, you can make money off Yautub. Close bracket. A lot of my friends didn't even really know slash care what I did. But every so often a video I was in would go viral, and I'd have people coming up to me in classes, like did I just see you on Perez? I once went to a Yatub event with a friend, and she was shocked, and could not stop laughing, when I was mobbed by a bunch of eager 10 year olds wanting autographs. Even though I don't work at Key of Awesome anymore I'll still get recognized sometimes. Just 2 weeks ago I was at dinner with a friend and a nervous mom approached me, and asked if I could take a photo with her daughter, since her daughter was a huge fan. My friend was watching, like how come you never told me you were famous, and if you're famous why aren't you rich enough to cover my meal? Outside of Yatub world, I work odd jobs in production, and do the whole struggling actor thing in La. A lot of the friends I've made out here, moved here from nigh about 9 months ago, aren't in the industry, so I usually just say I have a background in comedy and production. And so the cycle is basically repeating itself, when they see me on Yatub. I had a coworker at one of my production jobs come up to me the other day like so. My friend said there was this really funny Yatub parody I needed to watch. Anything you wanna explain before I continue? It's 